presentation for the best science conference ever. Um, here's my contact information if you need it. It's also on the blog and everywhere else I have me. All right, so my science e uh, pre preparation is uh, for in, at the end of the year for four weeks. Uh, I also do this for unit reviews at, at, after each content area. So um, to access this file, there's the bit.ly, but I do um, I also has a lesson, lesson plan format as well, but I do vocabulary daily. You can do index cards, what have you. A physical example, I'd say all those little activities that you always hold on to, like a cloud in a bottle, things that are on the, you can search for the web, but aren't necessarily experiments. They're more activities, they're just demonstrations or for the, for the kids or for yourself to kind of entice their schema or to, for them to build a background knowledge by, by seeing a physical example versus watching it on a video or reading about it. Then we go into some more audio video visual. As you can see, this format is following all the learning styles I can possibly think of that a child usually utilizes, especially to, in modern times when everyone's so uh, visual. So a quick brain pop or a study jam uh, or uh, a condensed video from Discovery Ed. Then I go into a tactile kinesthetic activity. You, Paige Keeley and SLS Strategies on Discovery Ed are fantastic resources for this, uh, like getting like Venn diagrams, first word, last word, um, agree, disagree statements, um, paper slide videos, you name it, all, lots of activities on both uh, resources for you to use. Then I go into a cumulative review of science concepts where it's like a it's in a test format. Um, a quick, easy way to do this is to also make sure it's cumulative, so that because on the and the grades they are cumulative, they are not in any order for uh, by standard. So bring in all those multiple choice test questions, and the best way to do this is to cover the answer choices so the kids can think about it first prior to just randomly picking an answer. And of course, an exit, an exit, ticket, exit ticket of a essential question or another open-ended question based on the content, um, where they can use their response, uh, expa explain their responses in a small essay format. Two or three sentences should pretty much tell you if these students are getting it or not. It's a great, it's a great exit ticket. Um, this is my scope and sequence. Of course, there is a bit.ly for it, but I do uh, properties of matter first because that's it's a foundational skill. And then when you use energy, which is the second unit, I chose that one next so that you are heating and cooling those uh, states of matter so that you can apply it. And then with heating and cooling, such as convection, I, that's that's go straight into weather and physics because you're expanding, contracting, lifting, moving by air pressure. So I thought the physical science together was a great idea. Um, then I go into life science as my second semester, which includes uh, the human body, and then the genetics, and then finally ecosystems. I put ecosystems at the end because there's a lot of integrate questions based on genetics and life systems for animals, not necessarily humans, which is, that's why you put those two together. And then it accumulates it there. Plus, at the end of the year, if you're short on time, ecosystems is a great unit to cut short because the students have a large amount of background information on this. Um, here is my resource page. Uh, it has lots and lots of resources for you to utilize. Um, I put them in order as a first-year teacher up to an advanced teacher, so I really prefer that you guys don't um, change the order of things, but I just want you to be aware that it's all in there in a sequential order for student, for teachers who are new. They go straight to joining the listserv, um, which provides lots of information. You have the, the, the essential standards plus unpacking them. Then you go into the North Carolina Wiki, which has a great resource packet that has lots and lots and lots of information, uh, lesson plans, documents, you name it. So it's a great uh, resource. Then, of course, you have Wayne Fisher's Wiki and lots of other resources to continue down. Here is an, this is an open document for a reason, so that you can add additional resources and be part of our community as a science fifth grade science teacher. And already quite a few people have added uh, some some resources. I have the genetics right on top because it's a great resource. Uh, okay, so then we go into um, some quick trips and tips and tips and tricks. Um, cover your answer choices, like I said. Uh, sometimes when if you want a physical example, I even remove the answer choices um, on their on their photocopies so that they are forced to answer the question um, using common sense before they'll get the answer choices. I do this in reading and math as well. So in reading, they have to reference the text first. In math, they have to solve the math problem before they look at the answer choices. Um, science should be a lot of hands-on um, and product-based learning. Um, and enjoy and have, and have an enjoy, enjoyable year. The more the kids are engaged in science where they have ownership, the more successful they're going to be. Uh, learning science for, through a work through a worksheet is not what I consider uh, very successful. I hope I hope this helps. Enjoy your year.